At this point in the course, I have introduced you to both the gravitational potential energy and the potential energy stored in a compressed or extended spring, and I've shown you the formulas that we use to compute those potential energies. We have also learned that if we have a process where only conservative forces act, then in that process, the change in kinetic energy plus the change in potential energy is equal to zero. In this class, the only conservative forces we encounter are the gravitational force and the spring forces. So for this class, we can express conservation of mechanical energy by saying that change in kinetic energy plus change in gravitational potential energy plus change in spring potential energy is equal to zero. In this video, we're going to do an example problem involving both gravitational potential energy and spring potential energy. In this figure, we have a vertical spring with one end attached to the floor. And in this figure, the spring is at its relaxed length. It is not compressed or extended. Then what we do is we come down and we push down on the top of the spring. And with the spring compressed, we place a mass on top of the spring. So we hold the mass there and we then release the system. And when we release the system, the spring extends back to its resting length. And as the spring is extending back to its resting length, it projects the mass upward. And we are then given the speed of the mass right before the mass hits the ceiling. From all of this information, we would like to determine the spring constant. So a summary of the given information, we have that the mass is 30 grams. The compression of the spring before we put the mass on it is 0 0.20 meters. The vertical distance from the resting position of the spring up to the ceiling is 1.7 meters and the speed of the mass just before it hits the ceiling is five meters per second. From this, we want to find the spring constant. We're going to use our handout for mechanical energy problems. So let's just jump right in. Step 1A says, draw diagrams illustrating the initial and final situations. So I have those diagrams. I just haven't labeled them as initial and final. So this is our initial situation here with the spring compressed and the mass on top of it. And this is our final situation here where the spring has reached its relaxed length and the mass is just about to hit the ceiling there. Step 1B, set the zero level for gravitational potential energy. So there's actually a lot of reasonable places to put the zero level here. I'm going to put the zero level at the resting position of the moving end of the spring, which means that the mass is going to start below the zero level and end up above the zero level. Now let's go to step two. We have option A, if all forces are conservative. So the only forces acting in this problem are the gravitational force and the spring force. Those are both conservative forces. So we're going to take option A, which says compute the gravitational potential, spring potential, and kinetic energy for both initial and final situations. So I'm gonna write out all the things we need to work out here. So we need for the initial situation, gravitational potential energy initial, Spring potential energy initial, kinetic energy initial, and then all of those for the final situation as well. We need gravitational potential final, spring potential final, kinetic energy final. Okay, so all of those can be calculated using this formula sheet. So I'm going to leave the formula sheet here. And here I'd invite you to pause the video and see if you can fill these out and then rejoin the video. All right, initial gravitational potential energy. So the mass starts at distance X below the zero level. Since the mass is starting below the zero level, its gravitational potential energy is gonna be negative. So I'm going to put in for the initial gravitational potential energy, mg, and then instead of h, I will put in minus x. This gives us a negative gravitational potential energy because the mass is below the zero level. Initial spring potential energy. In the initial situation, the spring has been compressed by a distance x. So we will use 
the formula for potential energy stored in a compressed spring, namely one half K X squared. Initial kinetic energy is zero. The mass is not moving yet. In the final situation, the mass is a height H above the zero level. So I will write that the gravitational potential energy is MGH. In the final situation, the spring has gone back to its relaxed length. So final spring potential energy is zero and final kinetic energy is one half the mass times final speed squared. Now let's go back to the handout. Going to step three, we're going to apply the equation for conservation of mechanical energy. Uh, we're going to use the lower form, which says change in gravitational potential energy plus change in spring potential energy plus change in kinetic energy is equal to zero. So here, I would invite you to take all of these expressions, substitute them in here, and see if you can get all the way to a numerical value for the spring constant. And once you've given that a shot, go ahead and rejoin the video. Okay, changing gravitational potential energy. That would be gravitational potential final minus gravitational potential initial. Change in spring potential energy. Spring potential final minus spring potential initial plus then change in kinetic energy, kinetic energy final minus kinetic energy initial equals zero. Okay, let's make the substitutions. Gravitational potential final, MGH. Initial gravitational potential minus MGX. So notice we're subtracting something negative. And we have plus spring potential energy final. Now that's zero. And minus spring potential energy initial. So minus one half Kx squared plus kinetic energy final. That would be one half M V final squared. And kinetic energy initial is zero. Okay, let's try and solve this for the spring constant. Now, with the first two terms here, I can pull out mg. Now, h minus minus x is the same as h plus x. And I'll just copy down these other two terms. Okay, now I'm solving for k. So I'm going to take that minus kx squared, move it to the right, and then switch sides. So when this moves to the right, it gets a plus sign, then I switch sides, and I get 1 half kx squared equals mg h plus x plus 1 half m v final squared. Now I'm going to multiply both sides by 2 over x squared. So 2 over x squared is going to multiply the whole equation. Okay, on the left side, x squared cancels, x squared 2 cancels 2, and we just have k left over. On the right side, I'm just going to put that x squared into the denominator and multiply through by the 2. So I then have 2mgh plus x. Over here, this 2 cancels the half. So I just have plus mv final squared. So substituting, we have k equals 2. And then m was 30 grams. I will convert that to kilograms, 0 0.030 kilograms. g. 9.8 meters per second squared. H plus X, so that would be 1.7 meters plus 0 0.2 meters. In other words, 1.9 meters plus M. Again, 0 0.030 kilograms. E final squared, so 5 meters per second squared. 
Okay, then down here we have x, 0 0.20 meters. All of that squared. I'm putting this in the calculator. The numerical value will come out to be 46.7. But let's do the unit check. So both terms in the numerator have units of kilograms meters squared over second squared. And then the denominator has units of meters squared. For a spring constant, we want the unit to come out to be newtons per meter. So to see that this is newtons per meter, where we have m squared over m squared, let's just cancel one of the m's. And when we do that, the numerator is kilograms meters per second squared, which is a newton, and the denominator is meters. So we have that the spring constant is 46.7 newtons per meter. And now we have solved an example problem involving both gravitational potential energy and spring potential energy.